Great. Uh, okay, so we're at the second half now. Um, what Tom's going to do is we're just going to pass around a little bag thing, so we've got a little bit of a collection for Brian. Um, so Tom will start passing that around in a second. Um, so yeah, second half. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Church, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Don't worry, we'll put it to good use. Just to sing it right up, everything you want to eat cheap. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at these questions again. Um, a couple of questions here about transiting from club flying to competition flying and about field landing and stuff. And I think we can cover that generally in that area. But before we do, there's a very long question here from Julian. I think it's Julian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that because it's the longest question here. <laughs> it's not really a question, it's a statement of fact. It's a normal for Julian. <laughs> this business of uh, some people being better than others, uh, it's really one of, the, one of the things that comes back time and time again. It's pretty obvious what we're doing, isn't it? You get in a glider, you take off, you go underneath the cloud and find a thermal, you go up in it, and you go and find another one. Yeah. Why is it some people do it so much better than others? <laughs> Why is it that some people seem to be able to just magically float along? But it, it's, it's not a gift, it's, it's hard work. Obviously you need the talent. Uh, I did have a little presentation about coaching and what you need is done. Unfortunately, you don't have a project on But in this situation, in, in gliding as a sport, we are not orientated towards elite sport. It's not like athletics. We don't have an absolutely clear goal that the purpose of running is to run faster than some other bucket. Yeah? And you've got a level at which you run, and if he can do it in 7.2 seconds, you're going to try and do it in 7.1 seconds. It's just not that sort of sport. Neither is it a very scientific sport, we take it. And it's a sport which requires people to be both creative and imaginative. If you don't see the beauty in it, you'll never see the science in it. It just doesn't work. And you can fly with people. I, I can sit in a glider with people and you can talk to them about the cloud you're coming up to and we're looking at two completely different things. <laughs> Their description of what they see, I think, really? Yeah, look again. <laughs> I can't see that in there anywhere. But anyway, we'll just to see what happens there. And it's really a, a question of your perception of how it should work and learning. And as you get better at it, as you get more experience, you, you reach a stage, you reach a stage quite uh, after a couple of years, depending on how much time you put into it, you reach a stage where you can do it. Yeah? I can take off, I can find a thermal, I can fly somewhere. You know, I can stay up, I don't land out so often, <laughs> and it's not too bad. <laughs> and you reach that stage, and then you wonder, well, what do I do here? Where do I go from there? And people don't understand. The, the people who make progress sometimes understand. But people don't understand how to improve is lots and lots and lots of little things. There is no, there's no silver bullet. Yeah? There is nothing that I can say to you that will make you a better glider pilot. Nothing. All I can say to you is things that I think you should be looking at and you've got to work on that. And so why do some people get better than others? Because some people are more motivated than others. Mm. It's to, it's a large, to, to a large extent the problem. But one of the things I wanted to mention about this in response to Julia's question here is that um, some people see quite a different picture. I know that I've been really, really fortunate in gliding terms to have flown in the British team on a lot of occasions with other very good pilots, with other absolutely brilliant, talented pilots. I had the privilege of flying alongside them and the privilege of talking to them afterwards and before the event. And then you're watching them, they're flying with you, you're trying to work together, and you're working on the assumption that you both have a common idea about which you're trying to do. And I've been amazed how often we've been completely different in our opinions about what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? What? Are you joking? I'm not doing that. Yes. And he says, you've got to be joking. We're not... You think, why can't he see it? Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that it's a beautiful sport because we're flying in such a beautiful environment. And we all see it differently. When you look at a painting, everybody sees something different. And so don't 
think of gliding as being a sport where it's, you know, numbers, yeah? If I add number six to number seven to number eight, I can get that. You <coughs> can't get that, yeah? Add number five to five in gliding, you nearly always get 11, I can tell you. Yeah? It just doesn't add up. And for that reason, this sort of stuff, you need to be really open-minded about what you do. And I said to these lads now, when you take off, don't think about the thermal you're in. Think about what's happening in your environment. One of the reasons that I can answer Julian's question when he wonders why he couldn't keep up yeah, is because we're looking at something completely different. And what I'm looking at is where the energy is in the air mass. I'm looking at 20 kilometres away, 30 kilometres away, and I'm looking at the energy. What I'm trying to do is avoid thermally. Yeah, and I can mm. bet you what Julian's looking for is his next thermal. And I'm trying not to do that. Yeah? I don't want to do that. It slowed me down. I'm trying not to thermal. I'm trying to find energy in the air all the time. So I'm trying to look at the air, find the way, little bits here, little bits there. It makes an enormous difference. You've got a glide angle of 1 in 50 in a modern glider, something like that. Sink rate of 1 and a bit knots, yeah? something like that. Well, you just get half a knot up and you've doubled your glide angle. Voila, yeah, I rest my case. Yeah. All I'm yes. trying to do is double my mind yeah. all the time. Yeah. So that's the way you're thinking. The other mistake people make is they think technology helps. Struck a chord. Of course, of course, technology helps. Yeah. Of course, it does. But it doesn't find the energy. It doesn't make the decisions for you. It gives you a lot of information, and frankly. A lot of that information is reducing the amount of information gathering time that you should be spending outside and looking at the environment mm. ahead. And it's giving you information that you're processing which has very little value. It's often low value information. Um, somebody reminded me about uh, an old mate of mine, Ingo Renner. In Ingo is, is another legend in gliding, he's been around for a long time. And Ingo won the Open Class in Benalla the same year I won the Standard Class. The Germans were very excited, the German press, and you get interviewed by the press and everything. And, I, and Ingo is German, yeah? but he's Australian, so he's German, he's living in Australia. Couldn't see Walsing Matilda mine, but he was German. <laughs> and they interviewed us, and Ingo, I had a, I think I had a Cambridge in my life. And Ingo had in his glider the latest Xander area. Now, if anybody's flown with a Xander, you'll know that they're quite complicated bits of kit. <laughs> and Ingo always oh. borrowed glider. He's never been afforded glider, so he's always borrowed glider. He's had a borrowed glider, a Xander Vario in it. And I remember the guy from Aero Carrier saying, and what did you think to the wonderful new Xander X9000 Okikoki 27? Whatever it was. <laughs> and Ingo thought and said, it's very good for telling me the state of the battery. <laughs> <laughs> it is important to actually work out what's important to you, what's important when you're flying. And we live in an age now of Audis and CUs and Flams and all that sort of stuff. All the time that you're looking down here, you're not looking out there. And that's, that's the book we're reading. The, the story's being told outside, it's being told in front of you. And whilst you're busy working out, whether you should have three boxes on your Audi or four, and if you forgot to put that box up there or which page you're on, the other guy's picked out where all the lift is and he's gone down the route and he doesn't need all that information because he doesn't have to stop him. Right. So it's really important not to m confuse gliding with a science. It's an art. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's something that you have to see, you have to understand, and you have to feel. And you can't get it out of a book. And that's why understanding this sort of stuff is the essence of it, you know, it's the roots of it, and that's what makes it so bloody exciting, because yes. you're never really sure what's going to happen next, are you? and who wants to go to a sport where you can predict what's going to happen next? Yeah. <laughs> I would like to, uh, where were we going to go from here, we were going to go on to uh, the business of making progress, or we, from beginners to competition, right? who asked this question then? The, what's the major what's the major step change from club flying to competition flying? Yeah. yeah. And what's the what level are you? <laughs> the CFI. Don't tell me. <laughs> Come on. Um, I, I would say barely intermediate on the cross country side. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, I I, I, I think that the, the 
competition pudding is rather over egged actually. That, that people think that competition is different. It's not. It's the same stuff. Really, you just do it with other guys. That's all. The problem we have in gliding is the sport is so badly organised that people just can't get the essence. Of it. They, they, very few people get the real spirit of what it's about. Very people really ever see it, really ever get it, because they get bound up in the clubs, they get bound up in what's happening. Don't start me on what's wrong with British gliding. <laughs> but the, to break through from that business where You've been trained, you've gone solo, yeah, you've started flying, you think, oh, I quite like this, you know, this is a bit of fun. It's a shame I have to hang around all bloody there and push those gliders and all that sort of stuff, but it's quite fun. Some clubs are now much better organised where people can make progress even more quickly. If the club that you're in is orientated towards soaring, if it's a genuinely soaring orientated club, yeah, right from the day that you started, you will have seen your goal as being flying cross country. You, you won't have seen going solo as a goal, you will have simply seen it as a step. And each one of these steps that you take on route. If, for example, you went uh, hang gliding, if you started hang gliding, your perception of the sport wouldn't be, I'm going to forward, come up there and slide to the bottom. Yeah? Your perception would be, I want to do what those guys are doing. Yeah? I want to fly up and down the hillside. And we don't have that same culture in gliding. We don't introduce people into gliding with that same ambition. Some clubs do. Some clubs are <coughs> more successful than others. So because people don't come into the sport with the ambition, yeah, they reach intermediate stages and they don't move on. Yeah? I mean, quite often it's difficult to move on because the instructors haven't moved on, the club's atmosphere isn't this conducive to it and things like that. But if you then are motivated to move on, and you aren't in that sort of club, well the easiest thing is to move club, but that's not the right advice I'm sure. The, what you have to do is you have to paddle your own boat, basically. And I think that one of the most important things to do is to find one or two like-minded people in the club. You find one or two people <coughs> in the club who have the same desire that you 